Hey guys, my name is Srini and in this video I will teach you everything you need to know on how to become a big brain rice farmer in the game Sakuna of Rice and Ruin. I will first cover the basics of rice farming and then go into detail for each stage and what actions you should take. I highly advise to watch this video in its entirety because everything is connected to each other. But if you are in a rush and are looking for very very specific information, I have made sure to add timestamps in the video description below. So let's start with the purpose of rice. Why is rice so important in this game? Well that is because of three reasons. One, it is directly tied to Sakuna's growth as a fighter. You see, despite being an RPG game, you don't level up from fighting enemies or clearing stages. Instead, you level up based on how well you took care of your rice field. The second purpose is food. Mirtha can cook food for you and after eating food you can obtain food buffs. The most important food buff in my opinion is natural healing, which heals you over time outside of combat. Seeing as there are no other ways of healing, this will make your exploration runs a lot easier. And rice is an essential ingredient in a lot of dishes. So the more rice you have, the more types of food you can make and the more food buffs you can obtain. Purpose number 3. At a later stage in the game you will unlock the ability to trade rice for goods from the capital. Some of these goods cannot be found elsewhere in the game and this is the only way to obtain them. Bear in mind that brown rice and mixed rice are not worth as much as white rice for trading. Quantity versus quality. Rice farming for game progression is finding a good balance between the quantity of the rice and the quality of the rice. The higher your yield or the rice quantity, the more rice you will have with which you can cook and trade. The higher your rice stats, so the quality of the rice, the more you can grow as a fighter. You can focus on one or the other depending on the situation, but from my own experience I believe that the quantity only matters much for the first two or three harvests. After that you should put more focus into the quality of the rice so you can grow faster. Whether you go one way or the other is heavily determined by the first two steps in a rice farm, but I'll get to that later. During the game you will unlock farming scrolls that contain valuable information and at the same time you can always ask Toyamon for a little hint by talking to him twice. The problem with this hint however is that it's mainly focused on getting a high yield and not so much the quality. So while his advice will get you through the season, Sakuna will level at a slower pace because of this. In order to strike a good balance between quantity and quality, I've gathered the knowledge written in all farming scrolls and combined them into an action list for each of the seasons. I will surely go over these, but feel free to pause the video and take screenshots if you want to use them as references later. So let me quickly explain the setup of these overlays. At the top of the screen you can find which season the overlay relates to. On the side you see 4 blocks, where each of the blocks contain the actions for the 4 different areas of focus. You can focus on the yield, which greatly increases the HP stat and the amount of rice you get, in other words a quantity, and you can focus on hardiness, aesthetics and aroma, which each focus on a better character growth, so quality. As you can see, focusing on hardiness brings a higher growth in 3 stats as opposed to a single one, so this area of focus is extra important. Now as mentioned earlier I am not going to focus on one of these 4 aspects, but rather find the right balance between all of these, and this is what the middle block is for. Here's where you can find the recipe for my own brand, Srini's Balanced Rice. I took a good look at all areas of focus and chose the actions that suit most of them or find a middle ground but more importantly are also easy to understand and do. That way you can just follow these steps and do not have to worry about whether you made the right decision or not, so you can put a good focus on the story, combat and exploration too. Does this mean that you will make the very best rise like no one ever was? No, but it will make sure that you have a good and balanced character growth while also have enough rice to cook and trade. So without further ado, let's put these actions into practice. Alright, let's start with step 1, creating fertilizer. On the final day of winter you can start preparing the field and before doing that we want to have a good fertilizer ready to give our future crop all the nutrients it needs. In order to create fertilizer you need to go to the toilet next to the main house and, you know, you guessed it, scoop up some fresh stinky poop. You then bring this to the fertilizer pit and add base components and amber to fill it up. For the balanced rice and for simplicity's sake, you can add 5 beast hooves, 5 beast manures and 5 fallen leaves and then keep adding amber until the triangle is fully glowing green. Now if you don't have 5 of each base component, that's no need to stress right away. It just means that you will need to add more amber in order to fully fill up the triangle. 
You should know that you can add more fertilizer to the field during any step of the rice harvest. So if you don't have enough materials, you can also create a weaker fertilizer first. And with that I mean to only fill the triangle to one third or halfway for example. And then add a second or even a third fertilizer to the field at a later stage. The most important thing with fertilizer is that your rice fields need to have enough nutrients during all of the seasons. And maintaining that is all that matters. So once your base fertilizer is done and your triangle is glowing beautifully green, it's time to add some additional components. These do nothing for the duration of the fertilizer, but they will ensure that certain stats will grow further than they would normally do. A safe thing to add, especially at the start of the game, is rotten food. Rotten food gives a bonus to each of the stats at the cost of being less resistant to insects. A quick and good way to counter this and also make the crop more resistant to diseases and herbs is by adding salt. You can get salt pretty early on in the game via the stage Bounteous Earth Grotto and the Gathering Node on the beach. Just send a villager there every time you head out and you will have some by the time of the next harvest. Aside from salt, you can use the special items that drop at night in the different zones, but they are harder to come by and are also needed for certain weapons and garments, so honestly I wouldn't use those unless you have no other choice. If you do not have any salt, don't worry about it. The crop takes a bit more damage, but the increased stat gain is much more important in the long run. Now if you add salt into the mix, you can see that something is rising and no no no, I'm not talking about the shield hero, I'm talking about the toxicity. While using salt brings a lot of benefit, it also damages the rice plants a little bit and that is what this stat is about. Now in order to reduce the toxicity, you can use the items Spring Water and Renowned Water which can be obtained in most stages of the river area on the map. Later on in the game you will find and unlock rare items that heavily boost the stats of the fertilizer, such as powders, flakes and medicinal herbs. If you have them, feel free to use them to level up quicker. If you don't, again, don't worry about it. A quick tip, fertilizer takes 10 hours to get ready, but you can make this instantly by adding the item Powder of Transformation. So, if you're late to the party with creating fertilizer, or you just want it right away, you can simply add one of these. On to step 2, tilling the field. If you haven't done so, spread the fertilizer before tilling the field. This will increase the quality of your crops more than it would if you'd add it too late. When tilling the field, you have two goals. The first goal is to remove all 10 rocks, and the second goal is to prepare as much of the field as possible before you plant your seedlings. So, first just run around and grab those 10 rocks, you also get stone as an item when you do this and you never know when they might come in handy. Then I suggest to start in a corner of the field and slowly work your way down in lanes. During your second rice harvest you will unlock the most important farming skill for tilling, which is Pharaoh's Sight. This skill allows you to see how much you've already done by giving it a golden glow. Later on in the game you also unlock a cow which makes the task a lot faster. I'm not fully sure when it unlocks, but I think it was around my 11th harvest. Once you are satisfied with your beautiful golden field, it is time to move on to the next step. Step 3 is sorting and sowing the seeds. Sorting seeds unlocks before your fourth harvest and is the most important part in deciding whether you're going for quantity or quality. By adding mud or later on salt to the water, it becomes heavier. As a result, the bad seeds who are lighter than the mud or salt water will float up and the good seeds will stay at the bottom. For the balanced rice I've chosen to sort thoroughly using mud as this increases the quality but doesn't reduce the amount of rice you get by too much. Just pour the whole pot of mud into the water and use the stick to mix it. You do this by moving your analog stick in a circular pattern. The amber you see in the middle is an indicator of how far along you are. Once it moves up and starts floating, you're about halfway done, and if it tilts upwards, you are about 90% done. Once you're almost done, look closely at the water while mixing to see if you see any more rice seeds coming up. If you see no movement anymore, you are done and can just finish it. Now once you finish this, Taoyamon will ask you how you want to sow your seeds. Sowing them thickly will give you a greater quantity, and sowing them thinly will give you a better quality. For the balanced rice, I've chosen to go with thinly for an increased quality. After a while, the sowed seeds will be ready for planting. During the second harvest, you unlock the most important skill for this named planting instincts. This skill shows you a grid on a field with the quote-unquote ideal placement for the rice fields. 
This ideal placement, however, seems to be for high quantity rather than high quality, because if you look at the farm scrolls I've unlocked, they clearly indicate that the seedlings need to be planted sparsely for a better quality. So, for the balanced rice, I've chosen to plant them with some space in between of them. Now as you go through more harvests, you will unlock skills that allow you to plant at a faster pace, so for each skill I will show you how to plant the seedlings sparsely. Okay, so as you can see we are going to plant now and the grid is active, which means that if we want to plant it in a balanced manner, we want to have one seedling in each and every of the squares. And we're not going to do that to plant them sparsely, instead we are going to plant one, skip a square, and plant one again. Later on you will unlock 2x2 two two planting, and this will allow you to plant, as you can tell from the name, two at once. And the way you want to do this is to stand in a, on the middle line of two squares, then walk back a little bit, and as you can see it's, it's not perfect but you have planted two at the same time. So then you're gonna take enough steps back to skip another square and they're gonna plant again and rinse and repeat. Now as you get more experience you will even unlock three in a row planting and this one is pretty tricky in the sense that you actually plant them in a straight line. So in order to do that properly you will stand in one of the squares and the three squares that you're facing are going to receive a plant. And then you just repeat that while leaving one empty row in the middle. Now, this is the final thing that I've unlocked. I do not know if there are more, but this is for corner planting. And this will speed up the planting stage tremendously. And the way you can plant these sparsely is by just standing next to a cluster of four squares. And then plant them, walk back, enough for and plant them again and rinse and repeat that okay so as I was finishing this field I just unlocked well-rounded planting which allows me to plant eight seedlings at a time in a circle so I'm just gonna see what it looks like yeah I don't think this will be good to plant them spark it looks pretty cool but they are very close together as well. I'm not sure what the point of this is, to be honest. I would just not use this and just stick to, at most, four corner planting. Once your seedlings have been planted, you should either get a little far apart or too far apart as a result. I think both of them work well for the criteria of planting the rice parsley, but that said, I can't find any concrete evidence in the game whether this works a lot better than planting the balance or not. So feel free to try out both methods and see which one suits you best. Right after planting, add water to the field so your ankles are covered. This is a water level of about 20% and also matches the criteria for shallow water, which we will use more often in this video. During your second or third harvest you will unlock the skill Aquatic Instincts. This skill allows you to see the water level and water temperature whenever you stand next to one of the water gates. Step 5 is maintaining the field and this is by far the longest step as it spans both the spring and summer seasons. Your rice will slowly grow over the days and it's up to you to make sure it can do so as good as possible. Now the ways you do this is by maintaining the water levels, removing weeds and catching bugs and that's all pretty much. Maintaining the field is what you would normally do just before heading out to explore and once you come back from exploring. But for the sake of this video, I will be using the game's waiting mechanic to pass the time instead. The effects should be the same though, so feel free to go out and clear some stages. Just a little disclaimer, you can do more during this stage, but this will complicate the process too much in my opinion, especially at the start of the game. So for those interested, I will go into more advanced tips near the end of the video. But for now, don't worry about it. First off, if you have a lock dock, you can open their cage at this point. They will continuously eat insects and weeds during the day, so this tremendously helps your rice crop out. Once the rice enters the sprouting stage, however, the ducks will try and eat the rice plants instead, so we, we need to avoid that. So in order to avoid that, you want to lock them back up during the third offshoot stage. Alright, for the first and second offshoot stages, you want to maintain a shallow water level. So this means regulating it back to around 20% based on what the weather is. For the third offshoot stage you want to dehydrate the plants, so open the gate and let all water out. 
Be careful with this though, because after this stage, the rice will enter the sprouting stage, and then the rice will suddenly need water again. So even when you're out exploring, make sure to check the rice status frequently, and you can easily do this by opening the game menu and look at the right side of the screen. Finally, during the sprouting stage, you need to add water again. And despite Taoyaman saying you need a lot of water, we are going to ripen it in shallow waters in order to both increase the hardiness and the aroma of the rice, and thus increasing the quality by a lot. But in order to increase the yield a little bit too, so the quantity, we are going to increase the water level to around 30%, which is still regarded as shallow, but more water than we would normally use. Seeing as this stage is so important, I will now give a little demonstration of how you can do all these things in a quick and easy fashion. Alright, so as you can see, the field was tilled, the fertilizer has been applied before that, and all of the plants are planted sparsely. So what I'm going to do now is show you what kind of cycle I go through in order to maintain this field. Now normally you would go out and explore a little bit. I'm not going to do that for the sake of this video. So I'm just going to wait until it's the next day. Now as you can see it's raining, right? So what's going to happen is that the water we have in the field is increasing. And this is not what we want. As you can see it's at level 22 it's not too bad but we want to drop it back down to 20 so I'm just going to open this side for a little bit drop it back down to 20 and that's it for the water level so the other thing I'd like to do is to look for bugs oh actually before we continue I forgot to unlock the ducks let's do that first and once I get to the field they will just march around and look for insects and weeds to eat now, in order to help the ducks, I'm going to look for critters such as frogs and spiders and snails because they will also help us clean the field of any pests. So, they are usually around the house. In the house you can find spiders, there's one here. Other spawn locations for these spiders are in these rooms. There's nothing here right now. And, oh, there's three of them here. So just picking them all up. Now after heading outside, there's still the storage shack where spiders can spawn. So I will check those two. And there's one to the top right. And that's it for one day. Now, seeing as the sun is shining, we know that the water is going to evaporate if we either wait or go out to explore. So what I'd like to do, I'm going to fill the water level up to, let's say 26%. That by the time I get back or I'm done waiting, it's going to be closer to 20 again. Now normally you would come back from exploring around nighttime because that's when your fullness meter will be empty and you will go and have dinner and as you can see it's already dropped down back to 15 the sun is still shining so i'm gonna put it up to 22 because overnight there won't be too much water evaporation going on and alongside that i'm going to look around for insects once more some here i think no it's just herbs yeah i've got a frog some more herbs you can actually use these herbs in dishes, and if you don't use them, they will go bad. And once they go bad, you just have more rotten food for fertilizer. So you see there was a frog. And I'm gonna check inside the house again, check the two rooms. side of the house there's something here it's a frog again so yeah you pretty much just rinse and repeat this if it rains you want to remove a little bit of water to keep it around 20 percent if it's if the sun is shining you want to add a little bit of more water so it can go back down to 20 percent without any issues now because we haven't seen any so far i can show you the weeds now they look like this and they are indicated by an exclamation mark you just walk up to them and pull them out while also doing all the other things, such as maintaining the water levels. See, this one's getting a bit high again, because it's raining, and also catching the bugs. So, I shall see you guys again in the third offshoot stage.
Alright, as you can see, it's the first day of summer and we can see that the third offshoots have started appearing. So this is the time where we are going to fully drain the field in order to let it dehydrate. The thing you can do is just keep this gate open because if it starts to rain there will be more water coming in. This is also the stage where I usually lock up my ducks because if we enter the next stage, the sprouting stage, these little fellas they will start eating the plants. You can lock them up instantly by just walking up to their cage, pick an egg, wasn't meant to do that, and just close the gate. Alright, as we can see by inspecting the plant and also checking the menu, they are sprouting now. So this is where we add a lot more water. Now I say a lot, but we have decided to only go for shallow water, but a bit more than what we're used to. The thing is, however, that the sun is shining pretty brightly, so there's a lot of water going to evaporate. The aim is going to be a water level of 30%. But seeing as the sun is shining, I'm going to bump it up to 40 so it can evaporate while we are waiting. Alright, so the final day summer has arrived. You can see that the soil nutrients are getting low, which means that the fertilizer is almost done, as you can see. Now, I usually don't add more fertilizer at this stage because it's almost done growing. You can do that if you want. And oh my, look at all these weeds. You can see that once you don't use the ducks anymore, the weeds are just exponentially growing but seeing as they've been sprouting for at least a day I'm going to go ahead and pray for dry weather so we can have the optimal circumstances of harvesting them tomorrow you can do this by talking to time on and then select pray and then pray for dryness that's the thing I want Okay, so it's still summer and they're actually ripe for the picking. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drain the field. Because even though I've prayed for a good day tomorrow, this is actually perfect. As you can see, the weather is high, the rice is ripe, so I can just start harvesting it now. And Step 6 is the harvesting and the drying of the rice. So ideally you want to harvest the field early in the season on a dry and warm day in the afternoon. This means that you need to be lucky with whatever weather you will be getting, but around harvest number 8 you will obtain the possibility to pray for a certain weather. You can do this by talking to Taimon about rice and then select pray. It does cost some amber, so if you do not have enough you can head out and farm some enemies first. If you don't have this option yet, I'd advise to just drain the field and harvest the rice as soon as possible, as those two criteria are also important for the quality. After harvesting the rice, you immediately need to put it on a drying rack. From my own experience, it takes about 10 hours to fully dry the rice, but if it rains in the meantime, you will have to wait longer. Again, if you have the option to pray for certain weathers, you can do this to make it go a lot quicker. Next up we have threshing. For the balanced rice it's important to thresh and polish the rice while it isn't hot. So make sure to wait until midnight or early morning to start this as it's usually a bit cooler then. You can check the temperature in the game's menu. Low and average should be fine but high is not good. At the start of the game you can only use twigs but as you progress you will unlock a hand thresher and eventually a threshing machine which both speed up the process significantly. These do not affect the quality, but they just make your life a whole lot easier. And finally we get to polishing the rice. This is the final step and for the balanced rice we are going to create white rice. As you can see on the top left side of the screen, white rice will improve Sakuna's growth, whereas brown rice will offer better food buffs. From my experience, Sakuna's growth will be much more important in the long run than temporary food buffs that only last a day. The only reason you'd ever want to make brown rice, in my opinion, is when you want to put more of a focus on the aroma stat. So in order to create white rice, you need to hull it continuously until you can't go any further. It takes about 10 progress bars to finish, and just like threshing, as you progress you will unlock tools that make this go a lot faster. The first new tool for this is a rice pounder, and the second one is a water mill. With the water mill you don't have to do anything other than wait about 12 hours, but I don't like this too much as I want to see the results right away. So I still use the rice pounder during this stage. None of the tools affect the quality, so just pick the one that suits you best. And that's it, you've just created Srini's balanced rice. As you can see from the result, it adds a good amount of growth onto all areas, 
Although the aroma set is a bit low, you can balance this over time by focusing on just the aroma set once in a while or make brown rice instead of white rice. My goal was to give you guys an easy overview of steps you need to take in order to consistently make good rice so Sakana can grow great and strong. And to do this I only focus on the easiest and most important decisions to make in each of the steps. This way you don't have to stress too much about the rice field while you're also busy exploring and doing other things for the story. If you found this helpful please make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel as I will be uploading more Sakana content over the coming days. Now for those who want to take rice farming to another level there are some advanced things to look out for while farming. I don't do these myself as they are a bit much in my opinion but if you want to maximize your harvest and create the best rice these will definitely be of use to you advanced tip one is the weather and water temperatures rice will be damaged if you have consecutive days of hot sunny weather or just rain a good harvest requires a bit of both so if you notice that you have too much of one or the other you can pray to change the weather if you have the luck this yet however there's not much you can do other than reducing the impact of this by focusing on the water now when it comes to water temperature Shallow water will always be around the same temperature as the air temperature, but if it's really hot and dry, you may want to cool the water off a little bit. The way to do this is by opening both gates so that the water level stays the same, but new cool water will ensure that the temperature drops. But then when the air temperature drops later that day, so during night time, you'll have to make sure that the gates are closed again in order for the rice not to be too cold. Advanced tip 2 is rice disorders and remedies. Rice can get sick and this can be caused by multiple things. It can be caused by the weather, it can be caused by weeds and also insects. By properly tilling the field before planting and using fertilizer, you can somewhat counter weeds and insects. If you add ducks into the mix, make sure to catch and release the good bugs and remove weeds whenever you see them. You reduce the amount of disorders or reduce the impact they can have on your crops. You can talk to Taiyaman about the rice status at any time to see if any of the disorders are present in your rice. I will now show you a list of all disorders and how you can prevent or fix them. So spindly, underdeveloped and wilted are things that can happen to your rice plant during its growth. So when we talk about spindly and wilted, they actually go hand in hand. It's when the rice plants have a long and thin stalk due to a lack of sunlight. So in order to remedy this, you will need to pray for sunny weather in order to make sure that they grow well. Next up we have salt damage and heat damage. Now salt damage is something that occurs when you add too much salt to your fertilizer. If you remember earlier in the video, I advised to use salt in your fertilizer and you can see that the toxicity level goes up. This is what salt damage is related to. The higher the toxicity, the more salt damage your plant takes. So in order to remedy that is to add refreshing water or renowned water to the fertilizer in combination with the salt to reduce toxicity. Heat damage is directly linked to the previous advanced tip, where the water on the rice field would have a high temperature. In order to remedy this, you open both gates of the field so the water level stays the same, but the water will cool off. But just beware that at night time, the temperature gets low again, so you need to make sure that the water isn't flowing anymore because it will grow too cold. Excess is when too much rice is growing, so there's a lack of nutrients in the soil. In order to counter this, we have decided to already drain the field of water during the third offshoot stage. It's also called midsummer drying. If you still have this problem though, despite having done that, you can add reducing remedy to fertilizer and spread it. Cloudy rice and cracked rice. Now I'm not fully sure of what the game means by this. It is clear that it's related to the polishing process, so when you are hulling the rice. But the only thing we know for the hulling process is that we need to keep an eye on the temperature. So these could mean that let's say the cloudy rice would be on a very high temperature and a cracked rice on a too low temperature and that we just need to remain average. But again, I'm not fully sure on this. But if you end up finding out what this is about, please share it with us via the comments down below. Alright, then we get to the diseases, which are rice blight, rice stripe virus, sooty mold, rice rag stunt virus, pecky rice disease and bacchanae disease. All of these diseases can be caused by mold, which can grow in water that's not refreshed so now and then. It can be caused by insects and weeds. And you know, if there are more weeds, there are automatically more insects. So again, in order to prevent this from happening as bad as it could, you want to make sure that in step one, the field is properly tilled before you start planting the rice and there's a good fertilizer going on. At the same time, while the rice is growing, you need to make sure that you catch as many insects as you can 
If you have ducks, release them as well. All of this will reduce the amount of diseases the rice can get. Now, if it's too late, if the rice already has a disease and you've checked this with Tayamon in a rice status overview, the only way you can really combat this at this point is by adding more remedies. You can add a remedy to the fertilizer and spread it. And again, if you want to use it instantly, if you do not want to wait the 10 hours, you can use a powder of transformation in order to speed up the process. And in the list you can see which remedies are needed to cure which disease. Now the only thing I haven't really covered so far are the trophies or achievements for growing extraordinary rice. And I can do that in another video if people are interested. So if you are, please let me know in the comments down below. So that's it. This video took a lot longer to make than I thought, but I hope it's still in time to help you guys out. If you enjoy what I do, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out and will ensure that this video finds a lot more people that may need it. If you have any further questions or found out that I missed an important thing, don't hesitate to let me know in the comments down below and I'll do my best to respond to that. And with that said, I want to thank you all for watching and until next time.